Hello! Today we're going to be talking a little bit about basic rhythms. We're going to do a couple of things. First, we're going to make a rhythm tree or a rhythm pyramid. And then we're going to talk a little bit about the first steps of counting and how to count some of our basic rhythms. Some of this might be review for some of you, and it might be totally new information for others. Either way, that is okay. This is just a great tool on how to understand the relationships of note values and make yourself a better counter and musician. So let's go. First, we're going to add our whole note to the top of the page. That's gonna serve as the peak of our pyramid, and that's the value that we're about to divide notes out of. So our whole note, just to be clear, is an open note head with no stem, and it's going to take up four beats in our music. So that's our biggest value. If we wanna divide that in half, we can make two half notes out of our one whole note. And as you'll see here, we can do that just by adding a stem to that open note head. And if our whole note is four beats and our half note is half of the whole, then each half note will be two beats, adding up to our complete whole. That's just the first step though. We can divide out the half note as well. If you look at the half note on the left of your page, you're gonna see it divide out into two quarter notes below. A quarter note looks just like a half note, but it's got a fully blank uh, filled in note head. And that quarter note is going to be one beat each. Two quarter notes at one beat each adds up to your half note. You have four of them, you got a whole note. All the way up it goes in the pyramid. Let's keep going from there though. If we wanted to take a quarter note and divide it out in half, the way we do that, if you look over at the left one, is by adding a flag to it. So this little flag here denotes that it's going to be half of our quarter note or an eighth note. And if our quarter note is one beat and our eighth note is dividing that in half, then each eighth note is going to be one half beat. Let's fill in the other set of eighth notes here as well first. And there you have it, one half beat each. Two eighth notes add up to one quarter note. And our flag is the one that's telling us to divide it out in half. So let's go one step further and that'll be all we do today. But on this next step, we're gonna add another flag just telling us to divide one step further. Now this 16th note that we've just added down to the bottom of the page looks just like our eighth note, but with an extra flag. Extra flag means extra division. If an eighth note is half a beat, all of these 16th notes are going to be one quarter of the beat each because we've divided our eighth note in half. Now, you might see a pattern starting to emerge here with our 16th notes, and if we did keep going, the way that we're going to divide out all of our note values from 16th notes onward is just by adding more flags. And yes, that can exist in music. I know we're already looking a little bit complicated with these two flags, it's a lot to look at, but you can add all the way up as many flags as you want. You can make your own music and have 256 notes just like this. But that is pretty hard on the eyes and I don't think any of us want to be reading that today. So we're just gonna leave that one behind. But the main takeaway here is when you add more flags, you continue down in subdivision of beats, onward and onward. But even looking at those 16th notes, this is a bit complicated to look at. So let's check out the other side of our pyramid and see if we can organize things a little bit nicer and neater. So for starters, let's break down that half note into two quarter notes on the other side as well. There we have it, all four quarter notes. Those add up to a whole note if you followed up the pyramid. But let's go further down. Let's make some more eighth notes on the right side of our pyramid. But let's make them look a little bit different. So here you see a bracketed set of eighth notes. We've got one beam across the pair of eighth notes rather than a flag each. It might look a little bit different, but these musical notes are telling you to do the exact same thing. Sometimes we do this just to organize our rhythms per beat. It's a little bit easier to read and easier to digest on the fly, say if you're sight reading. I think it looks a little bit neater and nicer and I would understand it better in context. So let's do that to our other quarter note as well. Where it really comes in handy is when you get past eighth notes though, because if you look at all of our 16th notes on the left, you might not even be able to tell how many notes are there at a glance. But here, if we use our beaming method rather than our flags, Ah, a nice group of four sixteenth notes. That comes right out of our two eighth notes and right out of our one quarter note. It's grouped by one beat, so you know exactly what you're looking at at a moment's notice. 
and let's go ahead and do that on the other side as well. So there you have it, 8 16th notes on the right side of the pyramid, just the same as the 8 16th notes on the left side of the pyramid. Maybe just a little bit easier to read. Altogether though, this slide here is showing our rhythm tree or rhythm pyramid. And it's showing how as you follow up the line, all of these subdivisions of the beats are just dividing out by two as you go into different note values. Let's talk a bit about counting. So with counting, let's start with quarter notes. For the sake of this uh, video, we're just gonna count to four and group our notes in fours. So one, two, three, four is how we would navigate these quarter notes. Simple enough, you tap your foot on the beat, you count on the beat. You've got your numbers, your numbers are your quarter notes. Now if we have eighth notes, we add our up beats. So we've still got our numbers, pay attention to the colors there, our first eighth note groupings correlate to exactly where our quarter notes fell. But now we're adding notes after as well, and those are going to be our ands, or up beats, or off beats. So counted in context, it sounds like this. One and, two and, three and, four and. We've still got our down beats, we're just adding a subdivision to what we already had. And we're gonna do that for one more step as well. So let's check out all of these 16th notes. As you can see, we still have our numbers on our downbeats, and we still have our ands on our upbeats. All we're adding is es and us. And those are gonna be our further subdivision that goes in between where those eighth notes were. In context, this sounds like this counting. One e and a, two e and a, three e and a, four e and a. As you can tell when I counted, and when you practice this on your own, your ones, twos, threes, fours, whatever number you're on for your beat, and your ands are still falling in the exact same rhythmic place. We've just added es and we've added us in between them with our subdivisions going to 16th notes. These syllables will exist in whatever way we count these rhythms, even if we're mixing and matching 16th notes and 8th notes and quarter notes which we do all the time in music. Most of our music isn't gonna be as neatly laid out as this picture here, but it's gonna be a little bit more complex. But that's a topic for another day. Thanks for watching this video, and we'll get back to more counting rhythms in a future video.